This necromancer is the twisted servant of the nether realm. This is Quan Chi. In the previous timelines, Quan Chi was a demonic sorcerer and a loyal servant to the fallen elder god known as Shinnok. In terms of appearance, Quan Chi has kept a distinguished look across all eras and timelines. He sports bleach white skin with tattoos across his body, giving him a ghastly visage that even outworlders would find unnerving. Typically, he features some form of dark garb, cloth or armored, with blades staring out in some way from his shoulders. He is also often seen wearing Shinnok's amulet on his person, a gift from his Lord of the Netherrealm. As a master of Netherrealm necromancy, he wields an emerald magic that not only allows him to raise the dead in an instant, but also forms skeletal constructs to wield his weapons or projectiles. One of Korn Chi's more effective abilities is his use of portals, allowing him to attack his opponents from all sides and ranges. Just because he's down for manipulating others to do his bidding, it does not mean that the necromancer won't get his hands dirty. But where does this power originate? For millennia, Quan Chi remained loyal to his master. He even helped Shinnok by slithering his way into the court of Shao Kahn of Outworld, fading the position of an ally. He gave Shao Kahn warriors of the Netherrealm to fight in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Scorpion, Noob Saibot, and Ame were constructed by the sorcerer. Quan Chi is equally infamous for being a puppet master behind multiple events across time. Long before the events of the 10th Mortal Kombat Tournament, Earthrealm first encountered Quan Chi when the Lin Kuei clan of assassins were recruited by the sorcerer to steal Shinnok's amulet by defeating the four elemental guardians that kept the artifact sealed away. The Lin Kuei assigned the task to their deadliest of assassins, Bihan, also known as Sub-Zero. This was all a ploy to retrieve the amulet from Quan Chi so that he could allow his master Shinnok to rise again and conquer the Aspel. Sub-Zero would accomplish his mission for Quan Chi, but thanks to the interference of Lord Raiden, the Lin Kuei would also prevent Quan Chi and Shinnok's plans. Quan Chi would even lose one of his disciples, Serena. Despite his failure, this would not be the end of Quan Chi's manipulation of Bihan. Through the events with Sub-Zero, Quan Chi discovered a pivotal part of Bihan's world. The clan's hostile history with the Japanese ninja clan known as the Shirai Ryu, and to be more specific, the rivalry between Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Hanzo Hisashi was a powerful warrior with a fiery heart, whereas Bihan was cold and bitter. Both served Earthrealm, but not for long. Quan Chi used the two warriors' hate for each other as a tool for manipulation. Posing as Bihan under the Grandmaster's approval, the necromancer led the Lin Kuei to not only slaughter the entire Shirai Ryu clan, but the loving wife and child of Hanzo Sashi. Hanzo was fueled by his rage for Bihan. This rage was what Quan Chi wanted, so that Hanzo's soul would be corrupted once he died. Quan Chi used Hanzo Asashi to craft a new warrior for the Netherrealm, a spectre that embraced the Scorpion moniker. And Quan Chi's manipulations were not over with. The rise of Scorpion allowed him to get his revenge on the Lin Kuei who fought to him all those years ago. When it came to the Mortal Kombat tournament, despite both warriors serving Outworld, Scorpion challenged his mortal enemy to battle, leading to the death a Bihan. This would have been a proper defeat for Outworld if Quan Chi was not the necromancer that he was known for being. With Bihan dead, Quan Chi corrupted his soul as well to become another experiment for the Nether Realm, where Hanzo took on the fires of the Hellish Realm as his weapon. Bihan became darkness itself, a living shadow that controlled the inky blackness of the dark. He abandoned the Sub-Zero name for Noob Saibot. Quan Chi made Scorpion and Noob fight for Outworld for secret reasons. 
Quan Chi even resurrected Sim Dao for Shao Kahn, but all of this was part of a plan concocted by Shinnok. Quan Chi convinced Shao Kahn to wage war on Earthrealm, knowing it would eventually lead to his own demise as punishment by the Elder Gods. Both Earthrealm and Alpha World would be weakened, no matter the victor, thus allowing Shinnok to begin his own conquest with Quan Chi at his side. These same events played out twice in two different timelines. In the first timeline, Shura was indeed defeated, but Quan Chi was simply banished to the Nether Realm. This gave him time to eventually escape and forge a deadly alliance with another dark sorcerer, Shang Tsung. Together, Quan Chi and Shang Tsung murdered Earthrealm's champion, Liu Kang, and the Emperor of Alphworld, Shao Kahn. And then they sought to raise the undead army of the Dragon King in order to become an unstoppable force against all realms. This proved foodless when Onaga, the Dragon King, returned to defeat both of them, as well as Lord Raiden. Quan Chi would end up as one of the many who fell tried to claim the prize during Armageddon atop Argus's pyramid. In the second timeline created by Lord Raiden, Quan Chi turned multiple fighters of Earthworld and Earthrealm into undead warriors known as Revenants. These Revenants served him and the Netherrealm loyally. However, one fight led to Ring able to break over the hold of certain fighters, including Scorpion and the second Sub-Zero, Kwai Liang. Losing Scorpion would end up being Quan Chi's greatest downfall, because Hanzo Hasashi would learn the truth about his past, leading to the ninja to get his revenge on the sorcerer. Quan Chi was killed. However, just before Scorpion removed his head, the sorcerer spoke the right incantations that would allow Shark to be resurrected from his amulet behind Amy Lines of Earthrealm. This would be the end of Quan Chi for this timeline. When Liu Kang became the Keeper of Time, upon defeating Kronika, he restarted history in hopes of creating a better world for all. However, with a bit of selfishness, Lord Liu Kang placed all enemies in meaningless lives. Shao Kahn was a servant of Sindal. Shang Tsung was a mere peddler of Outworld. And Quan Chi lived as a malnourished Outworld miner. Quan Chi and Shang Tsung would be liberated from their predestined prisons with the help of Shang Tsung from another timeline posing as a benefactor named Damashi. Once again, these two became the Deadly Lions, or a whole new timeline. However, they were merely puppets for the Titan Shang Tsung, tricked into raising the Dragon Army, as once before, by the demigod to wage war on Liu Kang's timeline. Once the truth was revealed, Quan Chi found himself and Shang Tsung in the temporary but effective partnership of Liu Kang and the Earth Realm and Outworld fighters. And now, the new Quan Chi has set out to create his own power, no longer a servant to anyone but himself. The future is no longer set for this necromancer. Though his presence is most notable in the most recent of timelines, Quan Chi's origins began as an anomaly within a short-lived timeline. He once attempted to tear apart the defenders of the realm by gifting them with the cursed treasure that twisted their minds into violence and hatred. However, once the defenders discovered this, they thwarted his plan. Since then, Quan Chi's presence in the timelines has grown and spread, becoming a staple that no one expected. The realms have no shortage of stories that need to be told and they are all within my archives. I will return to tell more. Until then, I bid you all farewell.